That was the forbidden phrase. But uh the forbidden phrase that made a lot of people feel out for the job, but you know, don't quit your job because just because you heard that forbidden melody, you know uh uh Unfortunately, I guess it made the line producer Fairly Otter quit their job because Fairly Otter has no line producer. Look. This is the... I'll show you. Over the course of its uh, original run, the Fairly Odd Parents has had... Uh, just look, the Fairly Odd Parents has had four line producers. See, it had a. Yeah, they were uh, Deidre Brenner, Randy Saba, Kelly Smith, and Alexis and Alexis Wallert. Their uh, most recent line producer, Alex, uh, Kelly Smith, she's uh, working on the Paramount Plus CG reboot of The Rugrats now. And uh, this is their, uh, look, this, this is their uh, animation team. Uh, they, you know, the Fairly Odd Parents had a lot of, Fairly Odd Parents had a lot of uh, animators. Um, and the, the Fairly Otter, Fairly Otter didn't have, and, but Fairly Otter, whereas Fairly Otter has only like, one animator for each job, and, an outsourced production studio called Boxel. Uh, sorry, those three are students. I'm sure the animators are somewhere. Uh, flex by. Um, yeah, here it is. The series animation department. These are all the people who animate the Fairly Odd Parents. Now, now the reason I'm showing you this is because, uh, yeah, the Fairly Odd Parents had a lot, had four line producers and uh, hundreds of animators, but Fairly Otter, but Fairly Otter has no line producer. You know, a line producer is not somebody who draws the outlines of. A line producer, when I was a silly kid, I thought a line producer was somebody who drew the outlines of, uh, I thought they drew the outlines of the animated characters, but, uh, but, you know, I was mistaken, they don't do that. Yeah, anime. Yeah, they, yeah. Line producer is somebody who uh, manages. Yeah, line producer is somebody who manages the budget. And let me show you the, the producers and the animators. Yeah, Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Otter has no line producer. It's. Uh, I'll do a full review on this and uh, like uh, later, like when I've in a month when I've seen all. I'll do four years later when I've seen all 13 episodes. Right now I've only seen six. But yeah, with Fairly Otter. But yeah, with the Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Otter, there's like. The Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Otter, there's like uh, only one animator for each job at Boxel Studio. You know, it's really sad because, uh, you know. I mean. Yeah, I'm going to do four on this later when I've seen all 13 episodes. But yeah, Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Otter is the. It's a live action reboot with no. It's a live action reboot with no budget or brain cells. See, all in this whole list of producers, there's no, not one of them is the line producer. There's no budget for this show.
Yeah, that's why it's limited to just uh That's why it's just limited to six settings. That's why just limited to six. That's why just limited to like uh, six different settings, and they have like really poor and they have like really poor special effects. For for more details on this, you can watch just those videos as to why the show has no budget. You know, it's really sad that uh, you know Fairly Otter it has no but it has little it ha Fairly Otter it's, it has little to no budget. It's a kind of show you make when you do not care about your product when you do not care about the quality of your product and you just want to make it for as little money as possible that, which is, I think is exactly what it's main executive producers Butch Hartman Fred Sieber and, and Christopher no J, and Christopher J. Nowak did they, uh, they wanted to figure out how they could make more money than the Fairly Odd Parents by spending as little money as possible and this is what they got you know and you know I mean I, I feel really uh, And you know, I feel really sad for uh, Raul Garcia here, the lead animator at, uh, you know, it, you know, there's no, you know, it's, I think Fairly Art is a kind of show with no budget or brain cells because there's no thought or effort put into its premise, you know, you know, the, when Timmy Turner is uh, leaving for college, he has his fairy permission scroll, which he can use to pass his fairies down to uh, Vivian Turner and her stepbrother Roy, but unfortunately the thing is, but it completely, but it completely dumps on the rules of the fairies in the fairly of who can have fairies in the fairly odd parents because one, only miserable kids can have uh, fairies and there's no reason for and there's no and uh, Vivian and Roy have little if, if any reason to be miserable and need fairies and two, the fact that Timmy the the fact that Timmy can. Uh, Passes fairies down to just any new kid completely ignores the completely ignores the rule of birthday wish, whereas he could only loan his fairies to somebody who's is twice as miserable as him, if not more miserable. And uh, you know, and since since Tootie is Vicky's little sister, and she has to, which means she has to suffer and put up with with uh, more of Vicky's torment every day more often than, far more often than Timmy has to. It made perfect sense to me why, you know, Timmy would be, could be allowed to uh, load his fairies to her for her birthday so they could grant her birthday wish, as the title of the episode says. I mean, it's a perfect title for a birthday episode when, you know, you have to vote your cartoons about fairies that grant wishes. And, uh, and you know, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, like I said before, Fairly Otter is the kind of show you make when you, you do not care about the, it's a kind of live action movie that you make when you do not care about the rules or the lore of, of the animated popper you're adapting for live action. You know, it's, in which it's live action animation hybrid where the fairies are animated and, you know, the first, and you know, when I watched the Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Otter, the first question I had was, uh, well, if it's live action, then what are they gonna do with Fairy World? You know, because Fairly Odd Parents, as an animated show, you know, there were, you know, there were limitless possibilities for any, there were limitless possibilities for what wishes could be, well, within the parameters of the rules, you know, that big purple book, the fairies, right? Within the, within the parameters of the rules, and stuff that was in the Fairly Odd Parents budget to animate. The possibilities for wishes that the fairies could grant Timmy were limitless, and and stuff that uh, and the stuff uh, and the you know the, as well as the different settings to which they as well as lots of different unusual settings to which they could go. Like uh, you know like you know sometimes it's never it's another everyday normal day in the neighborhood of Dimsdale and sometimes they go to really cool uh, fantastic fantastical uh, 
locations like that can only be done with the animation like Fairy World or you could or Yuka Potamia or that episode where or that episode where uh, Timmy was uh, in the internet in in, in uh, Information Super Highway. I, I sort of thought that was about in my childhood memories my childhood in my childhood memories of the episode I sort of thought that was that was always trapped in the computer and almost getting ran and eaten by the by that um, monster eating the photos, but I guess I had my memories mixed. But apparently, no. I guess I just got my childhood memories mixed up with Boogie Frights when she was had to when she had to see her laser eyes into the Boogie Man's disco ball. I mean, that was a complete coincidence to me that you know to me Bubbles didn't have any voice actors because I wasn't even paying close attention to voice actors back when I originally saw parts of Information Stupor Highway and Boogie Frights. But yeah, you know, I felt. But yeah, the Fairly Odd Parents had a lot of animators, and they. I mean, in Fairly Odd, they look fine, but. I mean, they look okay. How long they look against the images, but. You know, they get. But when they have fully animated scenes in Fairy World, that's when the animation gets. That's when it's really obvious how cheap and bad the animation really looks. And you know, I feel very bad for Raul Garcia, the, the, who's the lead animator at. Uh, who's the lead animator of Box Cell, because, you know, he got. He got to work on a lot of great film. He got to animate for the Smurfs, and he got a lot of make, animate a lot of great movies, like from the Disney Renaissance, you know, like Aladdin, The Lion King, Hercules, Tarzan, Fantasia 2000, and even Miss Doubtfire. I didn't know that movie had any. I didn't even know that movie had animation in it. So, yeah, it really saddens me to see him get reduced to uh, mentoring new and experienced uh, animators for the Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Odder. Um, yeah, to quote Mr. Enter in, you know, his worst cartoons in the 1980s, I'll quote what Mr. Enter said about the Mr. T cartoon. He said, uh, this shirt is what happens when you do not care. You know, because Fairly Otter, because Fairly Otter had no budget or brain cells or line producer, you know, they uh, they didn't care about making Roy and Vivian miserable enough to need very to need very godparents. But uh, uh, and uh, you know, and that the, they didn't care about making Vivian and Roy miserable enough to need very godparents. The animation that. The uh, animation looks way off compared to the original Fairly Odd Parents, and uh, yeah, fairy, the Fairly Odd Parents also had no credited line producer for the last seven episodes when they switched to Flash, and that problem has clearly gotten even worse in the Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Odder. For more details on what a cheap uh, lack on what a cheap on how cheaply made the Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Odder is, you can watch the second half of Just Stop's video titled Fairly Odder. I mean, uh, I mean it's, uh, fairly odd parents. Fairly odd that I survived. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. To, but yeah, I'm uh, also feel very, yeah, I feel very sorry for Raul receiving back into this, and uh, and also the also the voice actors for Cosmo, Wanda, and Mr. Crocker. Although I, I guess uh, it's pretty cool seeing Mr. Crocker. It's pretty cool seeing Carlos also keep playing Mr. Crocker in both. Animation and live action, sort of like how I like seeing Darren Norris get to voice Timmy's dad in live action in the three Fairly Odd movies. And, uh. Uh. Yeah. So, yeah, the point is that uh, Fairly Odder is a, a cautionary tale of, uh. what can happen when you try to make a show without a budget and without a line producer to manage that budget. So. If I ever make a movie or TV show in the future, I will definitely get a line producer or learn to be my own line producer.